everyone and welcome. My name is Summer. I will be your host for this evening. We are so excited to have you join us for our Spotlight webinar featuring the School of Social Sciences. We hope you are as eager as we are to hear directly from exceptional faculty and staff. Let's dive in and discover what makes UC San Diego's School of Social Sciences truly unique. Before we get started, here are a few important reminders. Um, please go ahead and use the Zoom Q&A feature to submit your questions. Dedicated staff and faculty will be responding um, during the presentation in real time. The webinar will last about 45 minutes and we'll do our best to answer as many questions as possible. Time constraints may prevent us from answering them all. If your question does go unanswered, feel free to reach out either directly to um, the school or to undergraduate admissions for any admissions related questions. To enable closed captioning, click the live transcript icon or select show captions in your Zoom toolbar. Um, and we thank you for your understanding and hope you enjoyed the session. So with that, it's my pleasure to hand over the spotlight to the School of Social Sciences. Hello, everyone. We're so delighted that you're joining us today. My name is Rachel Lapidus, and I work with the Dean of the School of Social Sciences to think about and create new academic programs that meet the needs of our students now and in the future. Next slide, please. Today, we are going to have the opportunity to hear from five of our 16 departments and programs sharing about majors in anthropology, cognitive science, global health, Latin American Studies and Political Science. And we'll have time for an open Q&A towards the end of the session. So with that, I'd like to pass it off to Mona Wong from Anthropology. Thank you, Rachel. And hi, everyone. Welcome again. And thank you all for joining us today. My name is Mona Wong. I use she, her pronouns, and I am the undergraduate academic advisor for the Department of Anthropology. And I'm very excited to tell you a little bit about our program today. So next slide, please. So before we dive into it, um, let's talk about what anthropology is and why it's important to study. Um, to put it very simply, anthropology is the study of humans, of all things human, and it's really dedicated to understanding um, the worldwide diversity of our social institutions, as well as our cultural traditions throughout history, and to studying our nearest non-human relatives. And so with this very interdisciplinary field, you'll see that we incorporate studies from the social sciences, biological sciences, humanities, and a lot more. You'll also see that reflected in the majors that we have to offer, um, of which we currently have five. So the first one is in the biological subfield. We have both a Bachelor of Arts as well as a Bachelor of Science. And the main difference is that the Bachelor of Science focuses more on the natural sciences. So you'll have a lot more requirements there, many of which do overlap with medical school prerequisites. So that's a pretty popular major if you're looking to go into pre-med or pre-health tracks. Um, next, we have the archeology span concentration and the sociocultural concentration. And finally, our most recent major, the climate change and human solutions major, where you get to focus on addressing climate change impacts. Um, we also have a new major coming soon focusing on environmental anthropology, so stay tuned for that. In addition to the majors, we do offer minors in each of these specializations as well. Um, the anthropology department also has a, a, something called a global concentration, which is a commendation you can get on your diploma when you graduate. And to get this commendation, you would take a minimum of eight units or about two courses through study abroad, demonstrate your proficiency in a second language, as well as taking two courses with pre-identified global content. And you can find a list of these courses on our website, which we'll have on the next slide. The next slide, please. Our department also offers many exciting academic opportunities. Um, first is our honors thesis program, which is a two quarter sequence you would take in your senior year, where you can work one on one with a faculty mentor to conduct independent research with them and complete a thesis on a topic of entirely your choosing. And we also help you get matched with a mentor who specializes in the area of research you're interested in. And at the end of this program, you can present your research to the anthropology community, including your faculty, staff, 
graduate students as well as fellow undergraduate students. So it's a great opportunity to develop your professional speaking and presentation skills. We also highly encourage studying abroad and participating in field schools, especially for those of you interested in archeology. span And many of those programs will be offered through the department. Some will be offered through the main campus study abroad office. And you can actually earn academic credit and fulfill your major requirements while studying abroad and participating in field schools. So you're not taking additional time to participate in those types of programs. We also very recently launched an undergraduate research fund that is designed to provide you with financial assistance if you're interested in conducting anthropological research beyond the classroom. And you will receive funding for an entire calendar year to conduct your research, and it's designed to be as flexible as possible so you can use it on research training materials, Um, any types of associated costs, including academic conferences and travel costs associated with those conferences. So it's super exciting. We also often have volunteer opportunities through the department. Many of our faculty do have their own labs where they conduct research, and they're always looking for students who are interested in the work that they're doing to assist them on their research or to develop your own directed lab project with them. And um, that's really exciting because then you get to build those faculty relationships while you're still a student. And finally, we have an Anthropology Mentor Protege Program or AMPP. Um, this is actually run by the graduate students in our department and they can provide you with mentorship, academic support, um, tell you a little bit about how they got to where they are, how they decided on the research topics of their choice and help you decide if maybe graduate school is the right path for you. So we are constantly working on adding more of these opportunities so you can learn more about them and other information on our website. I'll also send it to you all in the chat. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email us at anthroadvising at ucsd.edu. And we hope you'll check out anthropology. And with that, I'll pass it off to cognitive science. Thank you, everyone. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining. Um, I'm Casey, undergraduate advisor for cognitive science. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, I'm here to talk to you guys about a little bit of CogSci. We can get into it. Next slide. Thank you. So um, let's start with the big question. What is cognitive science? It's defined as the interdisciplinary study of cognition. Brain, behavior, and computation are the biggest branches within CogSci. Brain would be understanding the neurological processes and the phenomena that happens up here. Behavior, we kind of use experimental methods and findings within psychology, linguistics, culture, to see how it's connected to our brain. <laughs> and then computation. So we explore the powers and the limitations of technology, like our phones and our computers, as well as how we can replicate brain processes using mathematics to solve problems in the world. That's more geared towards AI. Um, The major here at CogSci is flexible and widely applicable. As we said, it's interdisciplinary. Um, it's motivated by fundamental questions here at CogSci, um, at UCSD's CogSci. The major is really exploring how we think, act, learn, exploring who is we, so people, animals, even computers, how AI is used within computers. Um, we also are big on innovation. So how can we use the knowledge of studying cognitive science to build new technologies and improve the world around us? Um, so it's very interdisciplinary. I'm gonna keep on using that word because it pulls courses from anthropology, communications, linguistics, computer science, visual arts to really um, encompass the major. Um, we are both social science and a STEM major. So it will be math heavy depending on the major you choose or the specialization. And we'll get into that next. Before we switch, I do, we did, so sorry about that. Before we switch, I do want to say that cognitive science is one of the most popular majors at 
UCSD. We are the first cognitive science department in the world. But um, as popular as we are and as much as we are growing, we don't have any plans to become a capped major or a selective major. Truly, you just have to meet with us in order to do some major exploration and see if CogSci is the right fit for you. Okay, I'm ready for the next slide. Apologize about that. Let's get into our different majors. Again, interdisciplinary. We have eight different specializations or five specializations, but eight majors. We have our BA, Bachelor's of Arts in Cognitive Science, a BS in Cognitive Science, so Bachelor's of Science. Um, and then every specialization is made up of different electives. Our first one is the BS in Neuroscience, um, which is usually used by pre-med students or students who wanna go into like marriage family therapy or type of clinical research. Then we have our clinical aspects of cognition. This is very much a neuroscience, neurobiology, health um, geared specialization. Um, it's very popular with our pre-nursing students as well. Then we get into our most popular major, uh, which is design and interaction. Um, you can think of this as the front end type of coding if you wanna do user experience, user interface. Um, we are big on the design of everyday things type of courses and a lot of portfolio. Usually students that have the specialization will end up in the tech industry at, as a job. Um, next, we have our language and culture specialization. A lot of students go into linguistics if they want to be speech pathologists, if they want to do clinical research in like speech development, human development, bringing in that culture aspect of cognitive science. And second, we have our BS in machine learning and neural computation. So that's where we come in with all the AI, building algorithms. Um, this is very popular for our students who know they want to go into the tech industry um, and want to continue building algorithms to better our, our technology. Um, and lastly, we have our cognitive and behavioral neuroscience. This is a joint major with the psychology department. It is very popular with students who know they want to go into clinical graduate research, whether it's a master's degree or a PhD. Um, you are very neuroscience heavy major, um, and you can only take cognitive science and psych courses within there, but it's really great. You can tailor it to either cognition, behavior, or just straight up neuroscience. <laughs> then, we have our minors. We have a very tailorable cognitive science minor. Um, and then we have our design minor. It, that one has to do a lot with design and interaction, but it's also interdisciplinary, meaning that it pulls not just courses from CogSci and design, but we have a lot of visual arts majors that take it, um, as well as urban planning um, and studies. What else? And a lot of marketing because product development, product management that has to do with design and user experience. Next slide, please. So some student resources here within the CogSci department, we do have our own in-house career services and industry relations specialist. His name is Andrew Cronin. Um, career Industry relations specialist is just a fancy way of saying he works with companies in the area to connect our cognitive science students with internships um, and research opportunities and host like hackathons or designathons, anything like that. He does host one on one meetings and has, I want to say, weekly workshops in regards to setting up your resume, making connections on campus. And he regularly attends our career fairs on campus. So spread out his services. We do work a lot with our student organizations within CogSci. So the first one would be like the Cognitive Science Student Association, Design Company, Women in Computing, Diversity in CogSci. We also have Design for America. So each one of the specializations usually connects you to a student organization. Next, we have our Senior Honor Thesis Program. Uh, this is a year-long research program, usually done, again, your senior year, with a faculty member uh, and a committee, eventually, uh, to do research in whatever you want. It's very flexible, very tailorable to um, asking, answering questions that you have. <laughs> 
it ends and culminates in a presentation spring quarter to the whole cognitive science department. And um, it really, how do I say this? It prepares students for graduate clinical research and how to present those findings. Next, if you are doing research or are interested in working in one of our labs at Cognitive Science, we have our COGS 99 or 199 course. It gives you credit for the work and the volunteering that you do in the research labs on campus. It doesn't have to be just COGS Sci, but we do like to help out our students with that. And lastly, we also encourage students to study abroad. We have an array of courses that have already been pre-approved to count towards the major whether it's through UCEAP or Global Seminars or UCDC, which is our like university uh, in DC or Sacramento. And that's pretty much it. If you have any other questions, you can always email us, connect with us. The QR code is for our undergraduate website within CogSci. And also we just launched our Instagram account. If y'all have any questions. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jane Eichhorst, and I am the undergrad advisor for the Global Health Program. Next slide, please. So before I dive into the Global Health Program overall, um, I first want to share the definition of global health that we use as a framework for our program. So global health is an area for study, research, and practice that places a priority on improving health and achieving equity in health for people, all people worldwide from an interdisciplinary perspective. Next slide, please. So in the Global Health Program, we have a Bachelor of Arts in Global Health and then a Bachelor of Science in Global Health as well as a minor. So some Global Health core courses that students are taking in both majors are Global Health and Cultural Diversity, um, Essentials of Global Health, Project Management and Health Sciences, Global Health Policy. And then I've listed here um, just a sampling of some of our Global Health elective options. So these are Learning to Care for Underserved Populations, um, Women's Health and Global Perspective, infectious disease, global health and climate change, uh, Native American health and healing, and then global, global mental health. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned in the global health definition, um, the field is interdisciplinary, which means that our program is interdisciplinary as well. So students, in addition to taking their global health core courses, they also may be taking courses from anthropology, biology, communication, ethnic studies, political science, psychology, sociology, urban studies and planning. The list actually even goes on from there. Um, so what this means is that let's say a student who is in our Bachelor of Science and is also pre-med, they may be focusing more on the upper division electives that are in biology, like a biochem course, which they also may need as a prereq for med school. Uh, whereas maybe a BA major is thinking about pre-law. And so wherever they can take a political science course that's eligible for a global health elective, they may be doing that. So really students, you have your core courses and then you get to tailor the majors towards what you're passionate about within the global health realm. Next slide, please. Both majors have a field experience requirement um, and it's also optional for our minors. So it's a 100 hour opportunity to get out there in the field. And this can look like volunteering, um, clinical shadowing, research, study abroad, internships. So there's a variety of ways to do it. Our program does have a massive list of um, field experiences that have already been pre-approved, but our director is also happy to review um, petitions if students go out and find their own field experience that they want to use um, for this major requirement. So I've listed a few 
of our pre-approved programs here. The first one is called Health Frontiers in Tijuana, um, and it's pictured here with Dr. Burgos. So this is one of our most popular field experiences that we see partially because it's paired with um, a global health course, Global Health 111. And so students are doing a seminar, but then they're also um, going down to a clinic in Tijuana for several Saturdays throughout the quarter. Another program we've partnered with is the Asylum Seeker Clinic um, housed in San Diego. Some students prefer to do their field experience kind of closer to UC San Diego campus. And so there they could potentially volunteer as a wellness peer educator or um, participate in research at the Center for Healthy Eating and Activity Research. Um, or students may be interested who are pre-med or um, going the pre-health route are wanting to get some more experience in a clinic. So they're going to volunteer at the hospital, just like across the street at Jacobs Medical Center. Other students may choose to get out into the community, volunteer at something like Alzheimer's San Diego or the San Diego Food Bank. So those are just some examples. Um, next slide, please. And then I want to talk a little bit about our community. So the first thing you'll notice if you meet global health majors is it is a passionate group of students. Um, and so we have a very active um, student org, Students for Global Health, and also are connected with the um, student org par partners in Health Engage. Our program also has kind of a peer advisor almost program. It's where we have global health student representatives. So these are students that um, you may see like tabling at events. They are just there because they love our program and they want to kind of share the news about the program with other students or incoming students potentially. So they partner with me um, to do office hours when the schedule comes out for future quarters to help advise and then during um, like finals week, they will put on de-stress events. I also want to share um, some established events that we have in our program that are very popular. So one is called Quarterly Conversations in Global Health. So this fall, um, ours will be on Asylum Seeker Health with some experts in the field, and then there will be an open discussion afterwards. Um, another event that is very popular um, for students to attend is the Horizons of Global Health Research Symposium. So this is made up of students in our honors program and then our master's program who are doing like poster presentations about the research that they have done in the global health field. So next slide, please. And then of course, we'd love to hear from you check us out. So check out our blog, um, follow us on Instagram. If you have any questions at all about the program, please email me at ghpadvising at ucsd.edu. And then I'll drop our website in the chat too. Thank you so much. And I'll turn it over to Latin American Studies. Hello, thank you, Jane, and thank you all for being here. My name is Cambria Herrera, and I am the Community and Outreach Coordinator for Latin American Studies, and I also work for the Sociology Department, and I am excited to share with you about our programs. Next slide, please. Our North is the South is our motto, meaning that we prioritize the um, communities that are south of the U.S. border, so this includes Mexico, South America, and the Caribbean. And all of our courses, all of our events center this experience. Even when we're looking at Latinx communities or Latin American communities in the U.S., we are centering the experience of uh, the communities in the global south. Next slide, please. Again, our program is also interdisciplinary. You've been hearing this across programs. We also uh, relate to sociology, political science, and many other programs across the social sciences and arts and humanities. Uh, we have many courses and many affiliated faculty that work with us to give you a, a wide range of options for what you can focus on within your major or minor with us. Next slide, please. 
Here's a little explanation of what our major and our minor both entail. The major is 14 classes and it requires a language proficiency in either Spanish or Portuguese, which can be done through taking courses or by taking a test where you test out of the need for this. We have three different um, concentrations. You can do a general Latin American studies uh, focus or just a concentration in Mexico or a concentration in migration and border studies, which gives you a deeper dive into the topics that you might be more interested in. And then our Latin American study minor is just seven classes. So this is really easy to do. It often uh, looks great on your resume if you're a political science or a sociology major and want to just boost up uh, what you have in your repertoire, you can have this additional focus in Latin American studies. Currently, there is a requirement for language proficiency in Spanish or Portuguese, but this will be removed for you guys in 2025. Next slide. Here I wanted to show you an example of some of our alumni. This was a panel that we had where these alumni came to our office last year and gave a talk to our students. So these are all folks who graduated from our program in a wide variety of fields. You can see here we have a development director in uh, journalism. We have a a deputy attorney general for the California Department of Justice. She went on to law school after studying Latin American studies, became a lawyer, and then started working for the Department of Justice, as specifically within the environmental section, with a uh, rich knowledge of what is going on in Latin American communities, specifically the Mexico-U.S. border region. And then Jessica is also working in the Mexico-U.S. border region of providing aid to refugees through the nonprofit organization, Church World Service. So these are just a few examples. A lot of our students go into nonprofit work, law, law journalism, um, and many other fields. Next slide, please. Another option that many pursue after our program is a career in academia and research. Uh, many students pursue a master's or doctorate degree. We have a master's degree in Latin American studies at UCSD. And uh, we hope that one day that these can be combined into a program where you can do a BA and an MA continuously. And many of our alum go on to become educators. Uh, we even have principals on our alumni list. So many different opportunities within Latin American studies. Next slide, please. We really encourage all of our stu students who can to study abroad in Latin America. It is most suited for our program to travel there yourself and get a face-to-face -face experience. We are currently having two of our courses um, in Argentina this summer, and you can also study in many different Latin American um, countries and in the Caribbean through the UCEAP program. Next slide, please. Now, I just wanted to give you a little example of some of our students that are involved with our program. You'll see here two double majors, a double major with political science and a double major with history. This is a, like I said, a major that pairs really well with others. And these are two students who did it, who enjoyed it and are um, now pursuing graduate school. And then I also wanted to showcase Isabella who wasn't a Latin American studies major, but did a research project with one of our faculty. So if you end up coming to UCSD and not choosing Latin American studies as your major, but have an interest, there are still opportunities of how to get involved with our faculty through research projects, uh, attending our events and other um, enriching ways to be involved. Next slide, please. So here's my information. Uh, there's also the email there for Luciana, who couldn't be here today, but she's an amazing colleague and is the coordinator for our program and can answer any technical academic questions you might have. You can also follow us on Instagram and our newsletter. I didn't speak to some of the amazing events that we have in Latin American studies and resources, but you can always um, sign up for these things and keep track of them there. And then I will drop our um, website link in the chat as well. So you can visit um, last.ucsd.edu. Thank you guys so much. Okay.
Uh, thank you for that. Uh, hi, everyone. So my name is Zane Sharifi. I'm the undergrad advisor for the Department of Political Science. Uh, something real quick about me is I'm actually an alum of this program. So if anyone has any questions about the student side of things, I'm more than happy to answer those. Uh, next slide, please. So we have a total of about nine majors, uh, eight of which are a bachelor's of arts. Uh, so general political science, but also the concentrations within American politics, comparative politics, international relations, political theory, uh, public policy, public law, race, ethnicity, and politics, but also um, a bachelor's of science in data analytics. Uh, this started back in fall of 2018. Of the top 10 political science programs in the country, only three offer a bachelor's of science. Um, and yeah, um, some additional uh, facts about our majors. Uh, students often confuse uh, comparative politics and international relations. International relations is the study of how governments interact with one another, whereas comparative politics, uh, you're doing just that, comparing a different system of government. I, of course, was a public policy major. Um, so next slide, please. In addition to all of that, we also have our uh, political science, international affairs slash master's in international affairs joint degree program, which I call the BAMIA program. Uh, it's a joint degree program with our Department of Political Science and the Graduate School of Global Policy and Strategy. Um, this, this began back in fall 2021. That was the first cohort. And um, yeah, you have the option to, um, if you're a currently enrolled political science student to take uh, graduate level courses in uh, your senior year and pay undergraduate fees. The following year, you would uh, complete those graduate level courses and earn both a BA and MIA degree from UC San Diego. And those classes are not only focused on the policy making in international areas, but also on the economic quantitative methods and accounting finance uh, those sorts of qua uh, quantitative methods. And we have additional info and uh, videos on our department website. Uh, next slide, please. In addition to all of that, we have uh, some research opportunities for students. Um, so one of uh, the uh, bigger ones is the Poly 199 independent research, which would have you uh, conduct your own research with a faculty member that you connect it with. But also we have the undergraduate research apprenticeship program. Um, those programs typically run in the winter and spring quarters. Um, they're about a 12 hour a week commitment, which you would be mentored by a PhD candidate uh, with their research project. And once you're paired with them, um, you assist them with their research, usually in sort of data collection, but not only that, you also can help in uh, data analysis and things of that nature. And in the spring, you have a 20 page uh, jointly author research paper option that you can conduct with that uh, PhD candidate. Next slide, please. As well as um, research opportunities, I wanted to also mention the, C the senior honors program. Uh, this is mostly for seniors with a 3.6 major GPA. It's about a two-quarter commitment between uh, fall and winter quarters in your senior year. You would conduct your own independent research and uh, honors thesis uh, under the guidance and uh, mentorship of a faculty member. During fall quarter, you would be um, taking a seminar co-led by two faculty uh who will teach you methods of research design and advanced methods. Whereas in winter quarter, you'll be focused mainly on the content of your individual thesis. If you're interested in this program, I recommend taking a look uh, on at the uh, the thesis manuscripts and honors awardees, uh, which is available on our webpage. And you can get a good idea of if this is something that you're interested in um, it's definitely something I recommend it for our highest achieving students. Next slide, please. In addition to that, we have the UCDC and UC Center Sacramento program where you can live and work uh, in an internship in either Washington, D.C. or Sacramento. 
Um, this would be a one quarter program that uh, you can receive UCSD course credit for an internship, but also major credit for a re for attending a research seminar and an optional elective course. This is a good program. Um, well, both of these are good programs on uh, gaining that firsthand exposure. It's definitely, I think, um, arguably one of the most vital uh, things to do is to expand your network, uh, especially among political science majors. Um, and referrals and recommendations have been a really big impact uh, in not only job search, but also grad school admissions. Uh, internships are available in all sorts of fields, all types of settings, uh, whether it be law or uh, anything uh, in between. Um, and it's a great way to polish your resume. Next slide, please. On top of that, we also have the Chris Houston Law and Politics Initiative, uh, which is a great uh, program for our uh, law school prospective students. It's led by Professor Mason Nichter. Um, and this uh, initiative is uh, in partnership with the University of San Diego School of Law. Um, our programs are our, our pre-law programs and our pre-law courses are led by faculty that are either practicing attorneys, uh, judges, or law school faculty members, and they can give you a really good taste of what to expect in a law school. Uh, they can provide students with, uh, regardless of their financial needs, support uh, to take part in not only those internships in D.C. and Sacramento, as I previously mentioned, but also in San Diego. We have uh, 10 plus pre-law seminar style classes. The reason I say 10 plus is because we are in the process of adding additional classes. So uh, uh, stay tuned for that. Um, next slide, please. OK, and uh, yeah. Uh, if you want additional information, uh, you can visit our webpage, uh, polysci.ucsd.edu slash undergrad. You can email us at askpoly at ucsd.edu, or you can scan that QR code. I can drop the link in the chat. Um, but yeah, I would recommend uh, scanning this QR code and visiting that link tree to see uh, what we have to offer. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Zane. And I would like to invite all of our presenters back on camera. And we will answer a few questions that we received privately throughout this webinar. And I will address the first one, if that's OK, to Mona from Anthropology. Mona, do I have to choose a major specialization in anthropology? And if I do, can I only take classes from that specialization? That's a great question. So we don't offer a general anthropology major, so you would have to choose a specialization, but that doesn't mean it's completely inflexible and you can't explore the other specializations. So all of our majors share the same core courses, and then you'll have specialized concentration courses for your major. For example, if you're a biological concentration, you would take biological anthropology courses for your concentration. But you also have five electives for which you can choose from any of our courses. So you can take some from sociocultural, you can take some other ones that are focused on linguistic topics, um, take some from archaeology. So it's pretty flexible and you can still get to explore a little bit of the other areas, no matter what major you are. Excellent. It's like a tasting menu. I love that. Exactly. Okay. So over to our colleague, Casey, from Cognitive Science. Casey, can you explain the difference between cognitive science and psychology and computer science? That is a very common question that we get um, when we're meeting with prospective students. So uh, like I previously said, cognitive science is the study of brain behavior and computation. Um, it's that STEM side that differences cognitive science from psychology. Psychology is focused more on human behavior, human animal behavior, and the experiments and findings that come along with it. Um, and then computer science is really just straight coding, mathematical theories, and how to solve problems using computation. I believe that cognitive science encompasses psychology and computer science, 
whereas the other majors just focus on their study. Um, this It's what makes cognitive science interdisciplinary, where you can still take computation courses like CSE classes and also take psychology courses to fulfill the major. Thanks. So cognitive science as nexus, I'm hearing. Yeah. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have another distinctive question here. This one's for Jane from Global Health. What is the difference between global health and public health? This question we get all the time. Um, so the best way that I can describe it is think of public health as affecting a smaller community or country. And then um, global health, global, wider, the big umbrella of it. Uh, and so like examples of maybe public health could be um, professionals going into like a low income neighborhood, checking to make sure that everybody's getting the health care that they need. For global health, um, a hot topic right now is climate change and how that's affecting global health. So right now we have a brand new course in our major planetary health that's being offered by a pediatric endocrinologist. So that's kind of some examples, and but it one won't lead you to a specific direction. You can do e either one and still kind of get to the same place if, if public global health is your interest, so. Excellent. Thank you so much. And we do also have a question in the chat about, I don't know, I, I'm putting you a little bit on the spot, Jane, but if you can share about distinction between global health, maybe, and psychology with a specialization in human health, and how those might set you up for med free med, free health yes. career. Yes. I will say, disclaimer, not, not an expert in psych, but um, with anybody going like pre-med, there are so many different routes to get there. Um, so it's often, we have a dedicated group of like pre-med, pre-health advisors. It's healthy through our career center. Um, but so students can be taking the prereqs for pre-med in many different majors, right? So it could be psychology, it could be global health, you could be biology. There are lots of different ways to get to that end goal of, of being pre-med or to going on to medical school. Okay, I think we ran out of time for other questions. So thank you so much. Awesome, thank you so much. Before we sign off, we'd like to provide you with some important information regarding the application timeline. Um, we encourage you to apply today. The application is open. Uh, the submission period is open from October 1st and the last day to submit your application is December 2nd. That is for the fall 2025 cycle only. Um, we recommend applying to multiple campuses to increase your chances. The application fee is $70 per campus for domestic students and and $80 per campus for international students. Um, fee waivers are available through the online application, which can cover the fee for up to four campuses if you qualify. Decision dates for our first year students applying from high school, you will receive your decisions by March 31st. And for our transfer students, you'll receive decisions by April 30th. The deadline to accept um, your decision to accept your offer for first year students is May 1st and for transfer students, it's June 1st. Uh, please keep in mind, um, please keep these dates in mind to ensure that you don't miss your opportunity uh, to join our vibrant Triton community. Don't forget to connect with the undergraduate admissions page. We do have a variety of events listed on our events page. Uh, be sure to check it out and register. Stay informed about these amazing learning opportunities. We also encourage you to subscribe to our newsletter to receive any updates directly to your inbox. Um, email is a really key way that we communicate to our prospective and our admitted students, and we don't want you to miss out. With that, if you have any questions that you also weren't able to get answered in today's seminar, we encourage you to reach out to our undergraduate admissions office. Um, you can ask about tours, events, any admissions questions, the application process. We encourage you to contact us um, to make sure you're getting your getting your questions answered um, so you can be best prepared for your application. Uh, the best way to do this is by using our contact us form found on our website. Um, and then you can also check our website for our office hours if you would like to phone in your call. And that's gonna be a wrap for our webinar today. Thank you all so much for joining us and we wish you a wonderful rest of your evening and good luck with your applications. <laughs>